In this video, you're going to learn to solve one-step equations. When we're solving one-step equations, the technique I'm going to show you involves two questions. We're going to get to those questions in a second. First, let's talk about the equation. Over here in my example, I have an equation. I know that I have an equation here because I have an equal sign in it. And in my equation, I have an expression equal to another expression. Also in this equation, I have a variable x. And typically when we have a variable inside an equation, we're looking for the solution or the value of x that's going to make this equation a true statement. So in a simple equation like this, you might be able to use guess and check to figure out the value of the variable. 3 plus something equals 10. Well, you might be able to guess and check and figure out that x needs to be 7. I'm going to encourage you, however, to use the steps that I'm going to teach you in this video because these equations are going to get more complicated and guess and check is no longer going to be a good way to solve these equations. When we solve an equation, the technique I'm going to show you is called isolating the variable, which means getting the variable all alone on one side of the equal sign. If I can get this variable all alone on one side of an equal sign, it's going to be very easy to tell what the solution needs to be. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our steps here. These are the two steps that we're going to use to solve one-step equations. The first thing we're going to do is ask ourselves, what is being done to the variable? So we're going to come back over here to our example. We're looking at the variable side, which is the left side, because that's where x is. x is over here. This is my variable side. So we're asking, what is being done to this variable? Well, the answer is that 3 is being added to x here. Then we'll go to the next question. How do we undo this? Well, how would we undo the addition of 3? We would use the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So to undo the addition of 3, I'm going to subtract 3. So I'm subtracting 3 from the left side of the equation. I also want to subtract 3 from the right side of the equation. We'll talk about that in just a second. But basically, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we want to do to the other side of the equation. So when I subtract 3 from this side, 3 minus 3 gives me 0. So all I'm left with on the left side of this equation is x. And I have x now isolated, or all by itself. On the right side, 10 minus 3 gives us 7. And now it's easy to see that the value of this variable that's going to make this equation a true statement is x equals 7. Now let's take a look at an example that will help us understand why, when we do something to one side of an equation, we have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So I started out here with a very simple equation, 5 equals 5. Now notice, if I were to add 2 to the left side of this equation, and I didn't add 2 to the right side of this equation, we would no longer have equality there, because I would have the statement 7 is equal to 5. So you can see in this very simple equation that if I add 2 to the left side, I need to add 2 to the right side so that I still end up with a true statement. Doing something to one side of an equation, but not the other, you'll end up in, with an untrue statement, or you'll lose the equality in your equation. In my next example, I have y minus 6 equals 12. Again, we're going to use these same two questions. First of all, what is being done to the variable? Well, if you look at the variable side, y minus 6, we're subtracting 6 from that variable. Next question, how do we undo this? Well, to undo the subtraction of 6, we're going to use the addition of 6. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Now let's take a look at what's left. On the left side, if I have a negative 6 plus 6, that's going to give me 0. So all I'm going to have left there on the left side is y. On the right side, I have 12 plus 6, which gives me 18, the solution to that equation. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. This next example, I have negative 4x is equal to 12. Well, if I write negative 4 next to x, that means it's being multiplied. x is being multiplied by negative 4. So I'm going to ask these questions. What is being done to the variable? In this case, we're multiplying the variable by negative 4. Next question, how do we undo this? Well, to undo the multiplication by a negative 4, we're going to use division, and we want to divide by exactly the same number. So since we're multiplying by negative 4, we're going to divide by negative 4. Whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I need to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. Rewrite my equal sign, and let's see what's left. On the left side, I have negative 4 divided by negative 4. Well, negative 4 divided by a negative 4 is going to give us a positive 1. 
So what I'm left with there is 1x on the left side. On the right side, a positive 12 divided by a negative 4 is going to give me a negative 3. Now we almost have this variable isolated, and it's actually very simple to get it isolated from here. If I have 1 times x or 1x, that is the same thing as x. So I can write this as just x on the left side is equal to negative 3. My next example, you'll notice the variable side has now been shifted to the right side. So when I ask what is being done to the variable here, I'm looking over here. And it looks like 7 is being subtracted from y. So to undo the subtraction of 7, I'm going to add 7. And then since I add 7 to the right side, I'm going to add 7 to the left side. And let's take a look what's left on both sides. A negative 7 plus 7 is going to give me 0. So all that will be left on the right side is y. On the left side, 15 plus 7 is going to give me 22. So I get the solution y equals 22. In my next example, I have x over 3 is equal to 11. Well, x over 3, that you can look at that as a fraction, but you can also look at that as division. x divided by 3. So when we're trying to figure out what is being done to the variable, x is being divided by 3. How would we undo the division of 3? We would multiply by 3. However, on this side, we kind of have it set up as a fraction. So I'm going to write that 3 as 3 over 1. Now on the right side, when I go to multiply by 3, I don't need to write it as a fraction. So I'm just going to write it as times 3 on the right side, since I'm working with a whole number there. I don't need to write that as a fraction. OK, let's see what we have left. Well, if I multiply this 3 over 1 times x over 3, I'm going to end up with a statement, 3x over 3. On the right side, 11 times 3 is going to give me 33. Let's go one more step here to simplify this left side. 3x divided by 3. This is very similar to what we had in the last example, where I have 3x that's being divided by 3, or I can think of this as just 3 divided by 3. Well, 3 divided by 3 is going to give me 1, so all I'll be left with here is 1x. Well, 1x is the same thing as just x, so I will have x left on the left side, and on the right side, I have 33. So when we're solving one-step equations, we can ask ourselves two questions to isolate the variable. First question, what is being done to the variable? And the second question, how do we undo this?